Hey everyone, oh, welcome back to my channel. My name is Helen, and today we are going to sew some scrunchies. And I'm going to show you how I sew with one hand. This video will be a process video in overview. It won't be a step-by-step -step tutorial, so just keep that in mind. And also, this video is dedicated to people who want to sew with one hand and people who are interested in one hand activities. In this video, you will see me cutting the fabric, which takes a long, long time, and also sewing the scrunchie together, which also takes a long, long time. Usually, it doesn't take two hours to make a scrunchie. I guess it took a long time for me because it was my first time sewing a scrunchie with that type of fabric. So I'll be doing a voiceover to show you the process of making the scrunchies and also I'm going to show you the tools and materials that I use. I will be showing you in depth of what they are and how they work in my next video, so stay tuned. So I know you are wondering whether you can sew with one hand or not, and my answer to you is yes, you can sew with one hand. I'm going to detail all the tools and materials that I use and techniques when sewing. I hope this video gives you an overview of what sewing with one hand entails. And in my next video, I'll go really in depth of what you do with your sewing materials in your one hand. I think that's it for the intro and let's cue the videos. This is me switching the blades. I have a straight rotary blade and a rotary pinging blade. I'm also using tweezers to pick up the blade because they are really, really, really sharp. So be very careful. As you can see here, I have a huge cutting mat. And also, I am working on my floor because my room has no space at all. So this is my workspace. Basically, I lay the fabric on the cutting mat and make sure it's flat all the way through. I'm also using two rulers and a Crayola marker to mark down the fabric of the scrunchie. And when I'm done, I trace the dots that I drew on the fabric to make a rectangle. A very long rectangle. Now I have what looks like a pizza cutter. This is called the rotary cutter. It acts like scissors for me. Basically, it's sharp enough to slice through your fabric, but your cutting mat will be okay. Because my cutting mat is a self-healing cutting mat, which means you can use the rotary cutter with the cutting mat to slice fabrics, cut fabrics. There are two types of rotary blades that I know. First is the straight rotary blade and the second is the rotary pinking blade. Rotary pinking blades are basically like the scissors with the little bumps on it. I'm going to insert a picture here to show you what I mean. Basically, they put what's on the scissors into a rotary blade. The only problem for me when using the rotary pinking blade is that I don't put enough weight on the blade. Basically what I mean is that you have to put all your power into the blade for it to work. Unfortunately, I can't go on my knees because my leg is really, really, really weak. So I have to sit down and do this activity. But if you can use both of your knees and kneel like that, do it. Only if you're working on the floor, that is. If you're working on a table, like your table is your workspace and you put the cutting mat on top of the table, then you don't need to do any of this. Anyways, rotary pinking blades are not that smooth. They don't glide as perfectly as a straight rotary blade. I'm currently using two rotary blades and both of them do not have a clean finish. I always have to go back and retry it again. 
like recut it. I'm going to explain more of it in my next video. Now I'm just rolling up the fabric and finding the pink fabric now. I'm essentially doing the exact same thing, but just with another piece of fabric. I'm not sure if you can see, but the pinking blade that I'm using right now does not work as well. I have two, like I said, and the second one works way better than the first one, but still not perfect. And I always, always have to go back and recut it again. It's just frustrating, so I guess we should do what we can. And now I am cutting the elastic for my scrunchies. I'm making two of them, but for some reason I cut three. I was going to make three scrunchies, but then I was like, no, I should keep one because maybe later on I would like to replicate the same pattern again. So I just kept one not as a scrunchie, but only as a template for my other scrunchies that I'm going to make in the future. Anyways, this is me just cutting the elastics. now it's time to sew. I'll also leave the tutorial that I followed down below. It was kind of confusing because the fabric that she used in her video was the same on both sides, but I finally got it so it's all good. Also, in my next video, I'll be showing you what kind of features you would want in a sewing machine so that you will be able to sew one-handed. Now, my machine is discontinued, unfortunately, but my machine is NQ550. And I'm sure there are many, many, many machines out there that are similar to mine.
the features that I like most about my sewing machine is the speed control. I probably wouldn't be sewing if they didn't have that, so I'm really, really glad that I bought a machine with a speed control. There's also a thread cutter at the left side of the machine, and I find that very useful also. And also, my machine has an automatic needle threader. I think that's the right term for it. Essentially, it loops the thread in the needle without having you to do any of the manual work. So that's wonderful for me. It also has a start and stop button. And it's great because I'm not sure if other machines have a start and stop button, but mine does. And I don't use the foot pedal for sewing, so having the start and stop button on the machine is really accessible for me. Anyways, enjoy watching me struggle, as always. I'm just kidding, by the way. And that was the video everyone. I hope you found this video very helpful and in my next video I'll definitely be sharing all of the you know sewing techniques and tips and tools and materials that I use and yeah and for sure for my next video I will be showing you everything about sewing and everything that I know about sewing that is. Actually, I didn't know if I could sew with one hand or not and I was kind of scared to look it up on the internet Because I was scared that someone would say like no, you can't sew with one hand and stuff like that But after looking through the internet and reading articles and blog posts and everything I found that many people were struggling with sewing with one hand too and people who had strokes wanted to sew again and there were so many articles well, not so many but some articles dealing that oh hey you can use a rotary blade and you can use a cutting mat and the speed control feature on your sewing machine and i gathered up all the tips that they said on their blogs and i tried to find them like the pieces uh, myself i'm really grateful for those posts because if they weren't there, I probably wouldn't go out and search for a roadie blade or a sewing machine that fits my needs and stuff like that. I guess the moral of this video is everything is possible. Well, almost everything. And that you should always try and think of different ways to do things, like your daily activities and sewing and crocheting and knitting also. Like, I never knew in a million years that I would be able to do these things like knitting, crocheting, and sewing. 
I just searched it up on the web and there were so many people who have already done the things that I want to do. So it gives me reassurance that maybe I can do it too. And I can. And look at where I am now. So it's cool. So whatever thing you think you cannot do, just search on the web and you might surprise yourself with what you find there. It might be shocking, like in a good way. So subscribe to my channel for our next week's video. And also I will leave all the links down below, articles and everything that I've said in this video down below so that you can check it out. And I'm also grateful for myself also because I took a willingness to create my crochet aid, like to build it. At first I was like, will it work? Because all the videos I watch, it seems like it works, but I didn't know if I'll be good enough as the crocheters with two hands are. So I tried and with practice and a lot of perseverance, I can tell you that it's possible and you can make crochet items in pieces just as well. So I'm just like so glad I tried at the beginning. Anyways, enough of me rambling. I will see you all later and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!